All right. Oh, lots of people in the chat already, though. <laughs> Why can't I have all the isopods? I like it. Wow. Jeff, your local exotic shop sells them all $8 per culture. That's pretty awesome. I think an isopod trade would be pretty cool. Maybe maybe we could organize something like that. Oh, and Frank, thanks for popping in. And thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Morelia. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Oh, Muffin Men got the Hilaria Brevicornis. That is cool. So we're going to start out with these two species. Uh, if you recognize them, you can uh, go ahead and say if you'd like to. But this is in response to a comment from Ashley N. And uh, she said, can you do a size comparison between these giants, Porcelli Expanses, and a Scaber? So what I did is I got one of the larger males. This is a young male, so keep that in mind. This is going to get a lot bigger, uh, a lot bigger than this over time. This is not by any means a fully grown male. It's a reproductive male, but they, uh, they reproduce at about, you know, a third of their full size, something like that. So this is Porcelli expansus, fairly small male specimen. These are fairly large Porcelio scaber lava specimens. So you can see that even now, though these are, are big lavas, and that's a small expansus, there's still a fairly big size difference, especially in girth and in the length of the aeropods and the antennae. But uh, over time, this one will still get a lot, lot bigger than these. And these are not going to get uh, much bigger. These are big for, uh, for a scaber. I haven't seen many scaber get this big. So that is where we are. So in a sense, yes. Uh, Newt, we are doing a little bit of that, and uh, Sandy was right. Yep, it's an expansus, Porcelli expansus, and then this one is uh, Porcelli uh, lava, Porcelli scaber lava. So I'm going to put the expansus back in the expansus bin, and we'll take a peek at the bin and just see how everybody's doing, and then I'll put the lavas back in the bin, and we'll see how the lavas are doing. Why not? Sounds kind of fun to me. Oh, tell us about your scaber morph. Jeff, what is it like? What does it look like? So the first thing I'd like you to notice when we look in here, put that guy down. Look at that. There are lots of young ones in here. I'm trying to focus on that one is tricky. I don't know if there's any there. But there are a lot down here of various sizes, as you can see. Having a little trouble with the focus. But you can see there are a lot of little ones, a lot of reproductive adults that aren't particularly large yet. But uh, yeah, we got oh a pied vibrant orange. I'd like to see this, Jeff. Got to see these. Is it like an orange koi? See, there's a wee little one there. Let's see what we got here. Got quite a few going on there of different sizes. There might be a couple down here. Oh, there's a few. A few under this piece of bark. So, and a few on the substrate under that bark as well, on the dry side. And then this is the moist side over here. So, Nicholas Vine. Tips for success with duckies. Well, so far, I would say my experience has been they like deep substrate, they like it moist, they don't like a lot of ventilation, they like fish food, and they like limestone. Although I know people get along without the limestone. There are those two Porcelli Scaber lava I was talking about. I'm going to put them back in here. And then here are some more Porcelli Scaber lava along with a lot of springtails. You can see there's Juveniles of various ages there, they're doing pretty well. Yep, 
and Ben's Bugs, Sherry, welcome. And Ahmad, welcome. What leaves do I give them? I give them mixed leaves from my backyard. There were all kinds of leaves in there. Um, so these are um, a few more of the lavas here. Oh, snailentologist, sorry to hear that, that you weren't able to get in those red and brown speckling back with you. There are loads of babies in here. Let's just take a wee peek in substrate, see what we can see. Usually when I dig in here, oh yeah, lots of little babies in the substrate of the lavas. So the lavas are doing well. Really pleased with the lavas. These are again from Smug Bug. I got a group... I think I started with a pretty hefty group, like 25 or 30 or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Um, in November of 2020. So that helps. I mean, you want to get a good start on them. But my mixed leaves include, uh, well, walnut, um, calorie pear, plum, uh, willow, pecan, um, a tree that I've only been able to identify as Goldenwood so far. That's, that's what I was told it was called, but I, I'm not sure the species. I think it might be some kind of locust tree. There are some red bud leaves back there. There's lots of different kinds of leaves mixed up, and it seems to work really, really well. So, I'm liking it a lot. I'm just going to get you another isopod group here. Why don't we do guess the isopod a little bit? more because people like that Ooh, theropod hunter croatian ladybird spider that sounds really cool i think i've seen the ladybug spiders uh, ladybird spiders they're pretty beautiful so i don't have any scabers as big as my dairy cow stag beetle i have some really big dairy cows compared to that but uh better late than never yes definitely and I did answer your question early on in the stream, so um, you can, right at the beginning, we, we handled that. And, okay, let's see. We've got a guess from Newt's Commander, if these are milk backs or not, but they're not milk backs. Good guess, though. Pretty close. This is a relatively new colony of mine. Uh, oh, we've got a super chat. Let me get to the super chat, and then we'll come back to this. So, Mr. and Mrs. Morelia, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Can you make, recommend a decent sized showy out in the open, or at least not shy ice pod for display enclosure? Sure. Let me let me grab some. These are actually um, these are Cali mix, Cassie. Cassie got it. Awesome. I'm grabbing some right now so I can switch these out because these are one of my top recommendations for. A display enclosure right here. Okay, I'm going to recommend at least three for a display enclosure. And these are in my tarantula cribs, my largest tarantula crib enclosure. And let's see if we can get these guys to come out. Feeding response is pretty easy to initiate with this uh, particular isopod. So Let's see if we can get um, get that going and see how long it takes, maybe, huh? I'm gonna get drop some bits down in the front there and on top, and we'll see what we get. It's not a perfect angle, but I might play with the angle a little bit, but we'll see what we get. Okay, so um, let's see. Three, Mr. and Mrs. Morelia. I'm gonna talk about um, this one. Is, these are the milk backs. Okay, Porcelia labus milk back. I think they're a great one, and I'm going to see if I can adjust a little bit here uh, the height of the camera. Maybe we can get a better look at what they're doing down here. Yep, we got a feeding response already down here. And I do have video of these going just to town on food. So let's see if we can get that going here. Um, we'll probably get a lot more of these in just the next couple of minutes. So I love Porcelia Levis milk back for a display enclosure because they don't particularly fear light. I mean, these are under bright light right now, and they are going for it. So I would recommend those. Dairy cows, same thing. They 
they will be out in the open and they're fairly large, both the dairy cows and the milk bags. It will take a few minutes for them to, to really get a feeding response. So we might, uh, uh, you know, take a pause from this and come back and see what they're doing. That's, that's very possible. That's, that's what we'll do, but we'll give them a couple of minutes. But uh, yeah, Porcelli Levis are really active and especially the milkbacks and the uh, dairy cows in my estimation. Two more I'm gonna recommend. It's one species, two different morphs. I'm gonna recommend for you Mr. and Mrs. Morelia are zebra pill bugs. They're pretty good as far as being visible goes. And then another one is, uh, well actually I'm gonna recommend two more in addition to what I've already said. I'm gonna recommend um, Porcelio ornatus yellow dot. And a lot of the other Porcelio ornatus morphs are like that too. Extremely active, uh, day active, get big. They're a little longer rather than thicker as opposed to the milkbacks. So they're probably a little longer than the milkbacks, but they're thinner. But very, very active, very, very strong food response. And um, just all around fun isopod to have around. I'm going to move this leaf because I think they're kind of hiding under that leaf and it's it's in interfering with our visibility here so I'm going to do that and that's going to make it a lot easier for you to see them doing their thing and uh, then another one to be honest Porcelio only days prunosis you get a nice color mix there or you get a color morph and they're extremely active in the day uh, in, in in the light they don't they're not shy at all so I would recommend those as well they're those are, what did I say, five different species maybe? So hopefully that answers your question. Those, were the, those are the ones I have that I would recommend uh, for uh, a nice display I spot that's fairly large. And thanks again for the super chat. Really appreciate it. So, um, oh Sherry, yeah, I'm waiting for my Porcelia Hoffman's Egg Eye Blacks, which are fairly new, to start producing as well. Um, hopefully your Porcelio Sevilla will start, or I mean your Porcelio Hoffman's Egg Eye will be like your Porcelio Sevilla. And let's see. Good evening, Sean Meister, Crystals, Pets, and Plants. What Cubara species do you keep aside from rubber duckies? Only um, red tigers. So I have rubber duckies and red tigers in the Cubaras genus, that's it. And you know, they may not actually be Cubaras, but uh, they're identified as Cubaras. So it looks like we got a question from Dan B in um, Patreon as well. He says, hey Russ, way to go on the pseudoscorpion. Great find. What else did you see on your trip? So um, one thing I should just clarify really quick. Um, I can't take credit for capturing the uh, pseudoscorpion. I'm going to see if I can find a pseudoscorpion that's out and about right now. They're actually out and about a lot. There, there are something like 14 of them in, in this enclosure. Well, soon to be more because we've got a female with a brood she's carrying around. I'm just checking. Nope, I don't see any out at the moment. Just, you know, once in a while I'll come and not see any, but a lot of times I'll see one cruising around. Sometimes there's two cruising around. Uh, they don't seem particularly shy, so that's cool. But uh, I would say... I can't take credit for capturing them. They were captured in Arizona by, uh, I think, Kyle and Will. Um, Kyle Candelian of Roach Crossing and Will, and I can't remember Will's last name, but they were together, I believe, when they captured them. And they captured the initial uh, individuals, and they've been captive bred for generations now. And mine are descended from those. I got mine from Kyle of Roach Crossing. So, um, yeah, I guess that's... That's where I can go on that one. Uh, but I haven't actually had my trip yet. My trip's coming up very soon, though. And I will be reporting on that trip, Dan. So um, keep, uh, keep an eye out for that. I will be revealing more about the trip once the trip has been concluded. So you can see the, the milkbacks up on the top there. They're not going quite as intensely on the food up at the top as they are in the food down at the bottom. But they're, they're going pretty crazy. It's a pretty decent feeding response, I would say, for visibility. And Porcelio echinatus. Doesn't that mean spiny Porcelio stag beetle? I don't 
I think I haven't kept that species for sure. Moon over Miami, hello. And Therapod Hunter, thank you for getting someone else in the hobby. That's awesome. So she chose Panda Kings. That's awesome. And maybe, Jeff, you can keep uh, Pseudoscorpions. Do you have any particular reasons why you can't at this point? They seem super easy. And Pseudoscorpions are not particularly fast from what I've noticed. They'll, their run is, is not very fast just because they're so small, I guess. Uh, not particularly fast, at least the species that I have. And I've only had experience with... You know, a significant experience with one species, the Dinochirus arizonensis, that I have now. So, uh, are Cubaris basically the roly polies of the Eastern world? Well, there are a lot of uh, Cubaris that are coming out of the Southeast Asia, but there are a lot of other isopod genera over there as well. But there's certainly a lot coming out of there. Oh, okay, I get it, Jeff. And, st okay, stag beetle. S like scabbard with much longer bumps, so a little bit spiny. That, that kind of makes sense. That's cool. Ben's bugs. What are your thoughts on watering isopods and checking up on them? Check on mine twice a week. Well, it kind of depends on a lot of factors. I don't think I can give you a formula for how often, just because, well, for two reasons. One, because different species, well, three reasons, okay. Uh, different species are going to have different watering requirements, and actually sensitivity to being checked up on. Um, I would also say different enclosures are going to warrant um, more frequent or less frequent checking up on as well. And then uh, finally, your just individual climate and uh, your ambiental conditions, I should say, in your house are going to make a difference because some houses are going to be super dry, get a lot of airflow, and need to be... Uh, your ice pods are going to need to be watered more often. And then you're going to have others where the airflow is not uh, that big of a deal. And, you know, it's not, you don't get a ton of airflow and maybe the house is more humid and it's not going to dry up as fast. So I would say totally depends on those three factors. And so it's hard to generalize. I think checking up on them twice a week is a, is a decent rule of thumb though, as long as you can be assured with the setups you have that you're not going to, uh, they're not going to dry out. You're not going to run out of food. I think you're probably good. And some isopods really don't like being checked out very much, checked on very much, so there's that as well. Uh, but usually twice a week you get away with, with most isopods just fine. So something funny that I've noticed with my milk bags, I am getting occasional white specimens. There's one on the right. Right now it's kind of digging around in this sphagnum moss. Uh, there it is. See, it's just, it's just coming out like that. And I get those occasionally in my dairy cow colonies, too. Not sure what's going on there. Don't really look like true milkbacks, do they? The one right in the, like the, on the third, on the left, that one's a classic milkback. And there's quite a few of those in here. But then there's some that look a little bit more like dairy cows, and there's some of those white ones, which is interesting. Well, Jeff, that's how it goes, I guess. If, if you can't keep any others, uh, you can't keep pseudoscorpions, might as well keep more isopods, that's true. And someday you may be able to keep them. Uh, all right, so how are we doing um, on the milk bag? Should I switch them out or should I leave them here for a little, for a minute? So is the white a genetic trait? I expect so. I'm not certain, but I expect so. And hello, Holly C. Basement pets, greetings. And I, I have some high black dairy cows too, which I like. They're, they're pretty cool. Pretty cool ones. So that's what a, a milk back feeding response looks like. Uh, this is this is why I picked milk backs to go in this display enclosure because they make themselves known, and they're not shy in this light. This is a really bright LED light I've got over here for for filming things, and they're just doing their thing right there. Okay, now. Next, we're going to look at another species. I'm going to try to make an adjustment here. And we're playing Guess the Isopod. Itty bitty ladybug. Hello. Who can guess this isopod? The fastest. There it is, right there. 
And Jeff, I agree. If you don't have milk backs, you should get them. And the answer to your question, uh, Ashley, okay, that is a, a great clarification of your question. I think there are some Cubaris that are fairly common and can be found rather widely, like Cubaris marina. But in general, I think a lot of the isopod localities that are brought over here and joining in the hobby um, are not, not as common, like rubber duckies and, and some of these other um, Cubaris. I think most of them are from very, very specific areas and sometimes just one cave system or something like that. So fairly uh, localized. So basement pets. Tarantulas or roaches, but have you ever kept true spiders? Yes, I do. I am allowed to keep jumping spiders. That's about the only one, but I do. And these do look a little bit like Armadillidium gestroy, but they are not. They are... This is Porcelia ornatus uh, Nord. Got these from Smugbug also. And they are breeding. Let's see if I can see some hanging out. Oh, there's a dead one. That's not cool. I hope the other ones are okay. Last I checked on here, see, there's babies in there running around. So I just, when I see a dead one, I kind of want to look around and see if there are other dead ones because that's not what I want. But I see, I'm seeing thriving young of various sizes, so that's a good thing. Okay. Yep, Ornatus. I think the first person to say Ornatus was Ashley, it looks like. Nice. And when I, you made the Emerald Tree Skink video with Clint, did he mention having any breeding success? They are producing eggs. I think the last time I talked to him about it, um, i trying to remember. I think the last time I talked to him about it, I've talked to him about it a couple of times. The last time I talked to him about it, I think he said uh, that it wasn't really the active breeding season, so they kind of slowed down on laying, but that they had produced some eggs and he was going to try in situ incubation, meaning incubating in the enclosure with the adults because they don't eat their babies. So he was going to try to do that and see what happened. I think it's what he said. So looking forward to seeing how that goes. I do want a pair of emerald tree skinks someday. If there's any possibility of getting some, it might be a while. Oh, did I spot one? I did. Let's see if this works. I just spotted one of the pseudoscorpions. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not with the light the way it is. There's a pseudoscorpion right there. Can you see it? Oh, a little bit. Sorry, the lighting is crummy, but you can see that. See that pedipalp open? It's just not focusing on it. So stag beetle, sphagnum moss. Oh, that's just, it's crummy that the lighting's not working. Let me, oh, well, that's a little better, maybe. Right in the middle, can you see that, uh, see the pseudoscorpion? I kind of scared it, I think, by moving the bin. But anyway, you could see a little bit. Okay. Not quite as exciting as I'd hoped, but if you hadn't seen, uh, you haven't seen any good, footage of my pseudoscorpions yet. I released a video recently about the pseudoscorpions. And then I've also got on my Instagram today, I posted a really good close up of a female with a brood sack, which you should see if you haven't seen it. So go to my Instagram or my Facebook or my Twitter, whichever one you prefer. It's on all of them because I, my Instagram automatically kind of semi automatically posts to all of those. So check those out if you haven't. The, you can see the brood sack. It's really nice to be able to see it so close up. So stag beetle. So you have sphagnum for a lot of species. I use for dry species, but do moist species like them too. I use them for pretty much every species, and they do like them. And it provides a great place for the, uh, the, the springtails to hang out too. So yeah, definitely.
Yeah, so the pseudoscorpion was really fun. I'm glad it was pretty well received. People seemed to like it. Did better than um, some of my other recent videos. So I was good to, glad to see that, that it went well. Who's got the name of this particular species and morph? Who's got it? I'm going to make it a little more easy now by doing this, letting you look at a few more of them. Name that isopod, folks. Name that isopod. Oreo crumbles, Newt, you got it. Oreo crumbles. This is one of my. This is my secondary bin of Oreo crumbles. So, uh, I've got a bin where they're really going crazy, and then this bin that I recently started. I split the bin, you know, and the other one has more in it. But let's see. We're gonna take a look at that bin. We might as well see how they're doing. Here we go. Now watch when I lift up this piece of cork bark. They're everywhere. And they're under the cork bark. And they're going to be under this cork bark and everywhere. They're, this bin's doing pretty well. Still a fairly new culture. And I did just split it. But they're doing well. And Newt, you also got this species. Very nice. Porcelio perinosus orange crumbles. Zerio crumble a bead of Cuban isopods. It is a breed of powder blue. Porcelionides prunosus powder blue. And it that has a few different common names, but that's the common name I know best. Looks like we have a large male mate guarding a small female there. Right in the middle. That appears to be what's going on. And young lad, you're watching all of my videos. That's awesome couple months worth of videos be all caught up. That's great. Did you go back all back to the scary old ones that I used to do? <laughs> and yeah, they, they really do. Some of them look like small milk bags. I've noticed that. that. That male that just released the female looks a lot like a mini milk bag, doesn't he? Um, yeah, I love the variety on these. It's, it's, they're a lot like little dairy cow, cows. Okay, in Sweden you call the powder blue Cuban isopod. Eh, that makes sense then. Totally makes sense. Okay, you can see that, uh, well, I was going to show you something about the sphagnum moss, but it doesn't really apply in this enclosure. But I do have sphagnum moss in with my Porcelio milk bags and with just about everything else. So, young lad, you watched them all. So, the first one, I think... If I remember correctly, uh-huh. Oh, I thought my wife was calling me. Maybe she wasn't. Okay, next one we're going to watch here. Um, the first video is about rainbow fish. Neon dwarf praecox rainbow fish that, I was, that were spawning for me. Okay, who's got this one? Species and morph. Well, I appreciate it, young lad. When you watch them leaving a like, watching the ads, it all helps. Totally does. So Darth Skaber, they, these are not the ones. Oh, look at the little babies. Pretty good batch of babies. I'm going to have to move these out of this bin soon. There's the, there's the parent right there. They look a lot like Punta Canas, actually, don't they? But they're not Punta Canas, and they're not magic potions. So, the, um, the Oreo crumbles, I just got Oreo crumbles from um, the Good Bug. I, I do get some that pop up in my powder blues, and I tried to isolate them, but it wasn't working very well, so I just kind of took the shortcut. So, these are actually Armadillidium vulgare high yellow, not my night gold line. This is a British line. I got these from Smug Bug, and they're pretty cool. I'm liking them. They look a lot like Punta Cana's, though, so those of you who said Punta Cana, I totally get it. They're like a light Punta Cana. Okay. Let's do a couple more. I apologize that there's newspaper there. I need to get like a something cool to put there. <laughs> because it's just the newspaper's not very exciting, is it? Um, I need to get it like a banner to put there or something. I don't know. 
All right. Name that isopod. Who's got it? Who's got it? It's not working very well. I'll put that down. Which species have we got here? Yep, Darth Skaber got it, looks like. Pure not as high yellow. Yep. These I got some from... Well, J-Man had some sent to me. There's a big bunch of them right there. Uh, was it XYZ Reptiles he got it from? I'm not sure. Maybe. And I got some from the Good Bug, too. Because I initially had some die off... Uh, with my first group, not all of them died, but enough of them did that I wanted to get a few more, so I got some from the good bug, and they've bounced back. They did, they did well, just like some of the other uh, Spanish isopods. They can be a little sensitive at first, and there we go. Yeah, tablecloth would work fine, wouldn't it? Should do that. Okay, I think everybody's going to know what these are. Well, maybe. And Theropod Hunter, so far, they do breed slower than some of the other morphs. Definitely slower than the yellow dot. But they they have been breeding well. Ooh, I just dropped a whole bunch of them. That was not my intention. Who's got this one? Which morph are we looking at here? You're close, Newt. You got the right genus. Let me see if I can get a nice couple of specimens up here for a good look. If I can get the light to focus on them. A little bit hard to focus. And polar, polar tree? If that's how you say that? Um, yeah, you're right. These are my night golds. This is Armadillidium vulgari night gold. There's another really nice one here. Yep, so these are my night golds. That my son uh, discovered the founding member of in a canyon near my house. And then we picked up some others that had higher yellow than normal in the canyon, brought them home, and been breeding them for years now, probably like five years. Yep, Sean's got some coming. They're the, the B-grade version of this uh, morph, so these are my holdbacks, essentially, and sending him some. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, let's do this one. This is a fun one. And that is lump, uh, lump charcoal. Yep, I, I put that in some of the bins sometimes. Okay, uh, who's got this one? Mm. This is a little bit trickier than some of the other ones we've done today. And Jose was asking me about this the other day. I've never heard of this term. One that looks like a powder blue, uh, and it's called estacado. Has anybody ever heard of that? Because I have not. So, this is not Magic Potion, actually, or T. albino. Newt, you got it. It's their white armadillidium nasatum. So they're whiteouts of armadillidium nasatum. They do kind of look like Cubara's white pigeon, don't they? Mr. Miss Morelia. Yep, white out. These are a Nazatum white out. Okay, one of my favorite species coming up. I have so many favorites, that's not much of a clue. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, you ready for this? Pretty easy one. Well, that's perfect then. If it's fun and challenging, then we we hit the sweet spot. Newt, you got it. Armadillidium gestroi. One of my favorite species. So bright, they stay bright, they get big. None of these are particularly big in this bin that I see, but the, the adults will bury themselves a lot of the time. There's only a couple on this piece of wood. But I love that when they're tiny, they're brightly colored. When they're big, they're brightly colored. It doesn't seem to matter. And they're just, the substrate's just full of them. They're everywhere. See, that's, that's the way to do it, Newt. You just, you keep guessing it, I'm going to tell it. That's the first one you ever got, Miller. Wow, that's a nice one to start with. Took me a while before I could source any of these. A local guy um, brought me a bunch of tiny, tiny, tiny ones. And that's how I got into them. It took forever for them to breed, as you might imagine, because they were so tiny. Hmm, what should we look at now? Let's look at these two. These are fun. They are really like little tanks. I love that about them. Yep, so it sounds like some of you have the same taste in ice pods that I do. You like the... Uh, like the contrast on those and the colors. So, young lad, were these wild caught or what? Ooh, you got it. Christian Shong. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name there, but that's awesome. Congratulations on the clowns. And Newt, you're right. These are high black Hoffman's egg guy. These I got from Scott, Legs Feeders. Just checking to see if there are any babies in there yet. Um, I got them fairly young, but um, they're getting to the point where I could see some babies soon, and I'm just, just kind of checking out to see if there are any in there. Sometimes the, the babies will be down in there. Oh, yep, I see babies. There's a little baby running around the substrate. I don't know if you could see that or not. But, yep, but yeah, you can see it. Bottom left quadrant burying itself. So, yep, they're breeding now. Oh, there's a larger uh, young one. So, there are at least multiple clutches in there. Sweet. That's good to know. I was hoping I'd have some reproduction from these guys, and now I am. I actually need to move them into a bigger bin now that they're reproducing. And young lad, go ahead and ask. I don't know if I can help you or not, but I can try. And Jim, I would say, yes, you need uh, springtails if you can get them are a good idea. It's not like you absolutely need them and will not survive without them. I can't say that. That wouldn't be true. But they are helpful. And did somebody lose their passport in the newspaper? <laughs> I missed that. See how it's going in here. It's a much damper enclosure. Oh, look at that. Which species do we have here? Anybody got this species? I mean, know what it is? Can name it for us? <laughs> Is there a spider? Mm. I do get the false black widows in here sometimes. Ashley, Ashley, you got it. These are Oniscus acellus uh, BC maple. I believe the official name is because they were isolated in Canada, in British Columbia. And so, yeah, they've been breeding for me, doing well. Uh, pretty cool. Kind of an underrated species, to be honest. More people should keep this species. They're really pretty cool. 
So, yep, Ashley, you got it. Oniscus is Celis. Hmm. Oh no! Just dropped the bin. Hope everybody's okay in there. Oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> Everything got bumped up to the top. Let's let's see how's everybody doing. I hope hope it's not too crazy. I just Mm, found one molting. Yeah, I just messed up the bin. Fell on its side. Kind of upset everybody there. Sorry about that. Those were... Does anybody see them well enough to even tell what they were? Oh, so young lad, um, if you have some in the 20s, you can probably get your culture going again. I, it might be better, actually, in some ways than trying to collect wild ones. And some millipedes there, pod hunters, do that. And red tigers is right, Newt. Um, there, pod hunter, I would say sometimes isopods, I mean millipedes, do synchronize molts. Wow. I hope they're all okay. That really... Makes me sad that I kind of, I didn't, you know, it didn't fall very far, but it fell far enough to kind of upset the substrate, which is frustrating. I'm sure they will recover. And there were just a couple of uh, red tigers, but they were not very visible, <laughs> unfortunately, because I had just upset the enclosure, which I feel bad about. Okay, let's see. Let's look at these guys. These are going to be uh, some of the last ones we look at, I think. Because it's about time for me to close up shop in just a minute here. Well, if you're getting one to two deaths a week in your adults and your your population's not keeping up, young lad, there's an issue we do need to uh, address most likely in there. We've got to figure out what it is. Um, so, Jeff, my favorite turtle and tortoise species? I don't know. I, I mean, I love them. And you can see desert tortoises in my state uh, in the extreme southwest corner, and I have seen a couple. I really like those. Um, I wouldn't keep them as a pet, most likely, because the only ones you can keep in a, as a pet are those that are adopted uh, officially through the government. That's the only way to legally do it. And it can be done, but I think I, I like the musk turtles. I like the, um, the whole mud musk turtle group. Seem really cool. If I were going to keep a turtle, I'd probably keep something along those lines. Although I love the... Um, what is it called? The black something leaf turtle? The little ones that can live in a vivarium that's planted like bioactive, like dart frogs almost? The um, reptiliatus, Diane with reptiliatus has, has one of those. They're super cool. Wow, Ashley, that's, that is a good success story on your maples. Hopefully, I think they will be okay. I, I think you're, you're on the right track there. I think mine will be okay too. It's just, it's frustrating. You see that, oh, I just messed it up, you know. Uh, I just feel bad for him. So, Jim, you're only getting five because they're cheaper. That's not such a bad number to start out with. Just add some more later once you get them going. Hmm. And these are... Newt, you're right, they're por porcelionatus, sometimes called dark south, sometimes called yellow dot, gold dot, they've got different names. So you're right. And Christian, I do have, I've kept, um, which species? Porcelio, not porcelio, um, Scolopendra polymorpha, that's the only giant centipede species I've ever kept, but I really like it. 
and sorry my neck cracked audibly hopefully that didn't uh, annoy anybody uh, let's see oh Ashley gets to release a western snapping turtle for the rehab and a red bellied snake awesome so young lad could be I mean if you have any fumes that are regular getting to your ice pods or you know occasionally even getting to your ice pods that are pretty strong that could be an issue potentially and yep it's got it right in the state of Utah only about an hour and a half or so from Clint's reptiles which is cool Clint's reptile room oh Jeff you got your background done on your dart frog tank that's awesome see this is this is truly weird right now the feeding response from these guys is not as enthusiastic as I would expect it to be and everybody seems okay but they usually swarm this food like crazy and immediately so instead of just a couple coming over and kind of nibbling on it kind of surprised by that so yep this is Porcelia ornatus yellow dot also called south or dark south yellow spot gold dot got a lot of names many of them referring to little dots on the rear of the uh, perion and on the pleon there oh congratulations on p werner i miller madsen on the babies i haven't kept that species so i don't feel qualified to give tips on it but that's a cool that uh, it's working out that way for you love that really cool species i'd like to keep that species at some point myself I have never kept it. All right. Hmm. I just not not into the fish food as much. I wonder if my daughter fed these guys recently or something. You'd think so, young lad. I I don't know. This is really weird. Sometimes I wish I could just appear in your house and take a look at what's going on with your isopods and see if that uh, we could do something for them. I feel like they're dying off kind of fast. And do you feel like the population is decreasing even though young ones are born and are growing? Or is it just the older adults are dying off? Hmm. Well, I'm hoping you can get your luck turned around with that. Because it seems like there's got to be a way to do that. Well, if you do want to send me a video or something of them, I'd be happy to look if I haven't already. But there are, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of changing half the substrate out and you can, you can reverse things like that sometimes. Sometimes that doesn't do any good at all. So it might not be a bad idea though, just, just in case. I'm going to add a little bit of egg crate to this here <coughs> a lot of isopods like that so I'm gonna put a little a few pieces of that in here for them I'm gonna do that actually with my Porcelia Hoffman's egg guy too <laughs> ah, who's that in our house fear not it is I isopod man All right, everyone. Well, I appreciate your attendance on the live stream. Appreciate the super chat, Mr. and Mrs. Morelia. Appreciate everyone's support. Um, I should go now, but I'll see you soon. I have some fun stuff coming up in the future. So keep your eyes posted for the next video on Friday. And uh, stay safe and stay healthy, everybody. <laughs>